Welcome back to Fresh Food Therapy, and today we have something special for you. One of my most cherished memories from childhood was spending time at Grandma's house, and every week on Sunday, the whole family would get together, and we would go to Grandma's house, and she would wake up at seven o'clock in the morning and put the red sauce on, so that at three o'clock in the afternoon, we all would sit down and dine together as a family. Today, I'm gonna to teach you how to make my grandma's red sauce from scratch so that you and your family can enjoy it. Are you ready? Okay, to start your red sauce, what we're going to do is we're going to put enough olive oil in the pan. You'll be using the pot that you're gonna make the sauce in at home. We're gonna put it in a fry pan just so that you can see it here. Put enough olive oil in the pan to coat the bottom. And then we're going to prep the onion. Once again, we're going to cut off the bottom, cut off the top, and then peel the layers off that we're not going to use. Cut it in half. And because of the way we want this to be done, I'm gonna use the chop wizard today to make sure that the pieces of the onion are cut evenly so that they cook more consistently and quicker. Now there isn't a, a perfect amount of onion and, and garlic. There's going to be some flexibility in how much you use. What I would suggest is if you're using, th this by the way is a industrial sized can of pasty and kitchen ready tomatoes, you're probably going to have access to the 28 ounce cans. So let's say for the sake of argument that you're making dinner for about six people to eight people. You're probably gonna use four 28 ounce cans to make that sauce. For that amount, you're only gonna need one medium onion. You wanna make sure that you coat the onion well with the oil so that every single piece is, is well coated and you spread it out so that all the onions can get even amounts of heat. We're going to saute them just to the point where they start to brown around the edges and caramelize. It'll bring out a beautiful sweetness in the onions and it'll also get them soft so that they melt into the sauce. So now the onions have been sauteing for a little bit and they're starting to get soft and a little translucent. They're not quite browning yet and that's when we're gonna add the garlic. We're just gonna mince it very, very quickly. For one onion, I would use two, three cloves, but it's all up to you for your personal choice. If you like it very garlicky, you can add more. If you like it lighter, you can use as little as you like or no garlic at all. We're gonna mince it fine. So we're looking for pieces about the size of a grain of rice. It'll allow them to cook quickly and melt into the sauce. We're gonna add them to the onions and then make sure that that is also coated and able to mix in so that it cooks evenly. Once the garlic is in, we're gonna let it just cook for a little bit till it becomes translucent and a little softer. We're not gonna let the garlic brown because if garlic browns, it gets a bitter taste, a very strong pungent flavor that isn't good for, uh, for red sauce. So now the onions and the garlic are perfect and we're gonna transfer them into the pot that you would be cooking them in at home so that we can start the sauce proper. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you 
the bottom of the pan so that you can see what the onions and the garlic should look like when you're starting the sauce proper. So what we've got is a thin coat over the entire bottom with the garlic and the onions evenly dispersed. So the secret ingredient for today is Pastine Kitchen Ready Tomatoes. They are San Marzano tomatoes from Pastine. They're kitchen ready. They are literally just the tomatoes crushed with just a pinch of salt. And all you have to do to make the sauce is open up the can and add it to your onions and your garlic. This is a number 10 tin can, which is a food service size. But you'll probably be using, once again, the 28 ounce cans. Be very, very careful. What I would suggest on this is use the, the spatula or the spoon to catch the sauce as it falls to keep it from splattering. We're stirring to make sure that the onions, the oil, and the garlic are evenly dispersed. And then we put it back onto the heat. The only thing that you'll have to do now to make it complete is to add a pinch of salt. If you like, you can use Italian herbs and spices, a little bit of basil, a little bit of oregano, or the McCormick's Italian seasoning blend is a beautiful addition. I will be honest, you should try it with just the tomatoes and the pinch of salt first, and then see if you wanna add any herbs. Now here's where the recipe gets exciting. What I do, which is a little different than anybody else, especially members of my own family, is I put the sauce into the oven uncovered at about 265 to 275 because I'm gonna slow roast the sauce. And as the sauce roasts in the oven, you don't need to turn it. Maybe once or twice if you just wanna see. But if you leave it in the oven uncovered, it will slowly reduce and it'll increase the flavor of the tomatoes and the depth of the sauce. When you're making this amount, what you wanna do is probably roast it in the oven for about two to four hours. You'll be able to tell after you've done it once or twice how you like the sauce, but if you roast it for that period of time, that will give you enough time to make meatballs, to make sausage, to blacken some peppers and some onions, whatever you'd like to add to your sauce to make it your own, that's the time in which to do it. So now we're going to put the pot into the oven at 270 degrees and allow it to roast without a cover. You want to ensure that the pan is oven safe and you want to make sure that you leave the cover off to allow the pot to reduce and to thicken. When you're making the water perfect, you just need to add a pinch of salt. Now we're going to boil the pasta. You want to put enough water in the pan to cover the pasta easily. For every pound, you want to use about three to four quarts. So plan to have a pot that is the right size for the amount of pasta that you're making. There's no need to add oil or any other item to the water. So after the two to three hours, the sauce should be done. What we did was we boiled some pasta, put the sauce over the top, made a quick salad and some fresh bread, and there you have a meal for about $1.78 to $2.15 a portion, depending on the size of the pasta and the amount of sauce used. Now, at this point, I would normally be thanking you for watching Fresh Food Therapy, but you know what? We've got a surprise for you. We're gonna create another dish out of everything that you just put together so you can feed your family in a more hearty and fun way. Are you ready? So while the pasta was cooking for the last dish, secretly I boiled off a pound and a half of penne pasta. When you make baked penne, what you wanna do is you wanna take the amount of time that it tells you to cook and add a minute or two. You want the pasta to be overcooked because during the baking process it dries out. 
Now that we have the pasta, what we're gonna do is we're literally going to do, very quickly, we're gonna add an entire container of ricotta cheese. And fold it into the hot pasta. Ricotta is a fresh cheese that is creamy and smooth. Once the pasta is coated evenly, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into phase two, which is we're gonna add a little bit of shaker cheese, a little bit of Romano and Parmesan. Don't be shy. Mix it in to get it even. That will add a little bit of salt and a little bit of texture to the baked pasta. Add a little bit more. Now, depending on how you like it, if you want it to be more like lasagna, you can pack it into the dish now. But if you want it to be more of a, a baked penne, what I do is I add a little bit of the red sauce. And then we're gonna load the pan. Take a baking dish. Fill it so that there's about a half an inch to the rim. And don't pack it too tight. We're gonna take more of the red sauce, sprinkle it over the top, use a little bit more of the Parmesan and Romano, and then we're gonna take low moisture, fresh mozzarella and put it over the top. Now that the dish is ready to be baked, we're going to put it into the oven at 375 degrees. We just have to melt the cheese and get it to a nice bubbly golden brown on the top. The, there's nothing in this dish that needs to cook all the way through. The pasta is already cooked and the cheeses are safe. So this is a quick dish. You probably only need to bake it for 15 to 20 minutes. It just came out of the oven and it should be melty and cheesy and wonderful. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna plate up the dish. To make this a meal, you can serve it with a little bit of fresh cheese, a little bit of crushed red pepper if you like spice, and of course you want to have a little bit more of the red sauce on the table for people to help themselves to. Today's episode, we taught you how to make my family recipe for the red sauce, basic, and we taught you how to plate up a simple uh, pasta dish, but we also taught you how to make a more complex but quick baked pasta dish. The, di the portion on the plain pasta dish is about $1.85 to $2 a portion, depending on the size. For the baked, the cheese and the added expense does cost a little bit more. You're looking at about $2.75 to $3 a portion. But the pleasure with this dish is, after you've had dinner, you can take the rest, put it in the refrigerator, and it should be good for a few days for pickup meals and for leftovers. It was a pleasure sharing my family recipes with you. I hope you enjoyed this segment and we look forward to seeing you again at Fresh Food Therapy.